Hey, I'm sitting up here today. I came up to Longmont. I'm doing some shooting with Rick at Rocky Mountain Precision Air Guns. We're hanging out at his personal range. He's able to shoot out to 100 yards right here. But what I'm doing today, I got the M3 out here. I've got a preliminary tune on it and I'm running through some slugs. I'm just gonna shoot uh, a group with uh, five or six of these just to see, get a relative comparison as to which one that seems to like better. Um, I've got the regs sitting at 160 and yeah, got the regs sitting at 160, uh, the wheels on 16, the little dialer knob here is all the way out. Everything's pretty much maxed out. I'm just trying to get a good idea. They're going about 965 to 985 feet per second. I'm just trying to get an idea of which one of these heavy slugs, these are everything from 31 grain to 34 grain. I'm trying to hit that, you know, high BC and get it moving fast enough to get the terminal performance that I'm looking for. So I've got the camera rolling on the target down there. I'm going to try and just roll through uh, five of these groups uh, pretty quickly so I don't have to do a lot of editing and stuff. And just, like I said, get a relative comparison as to which one of these uh, you know, maybe I can isolate it down to one or two uh, of these slugs that I can do some more fine-tuning with and, and see what I can get it to do. So I'm going to uh, uh, load up some of these and we'll be right back. Five shots with the, uh, these are the AVS Air Velocity Sport, 34 grain, 217 diameter cut base. So that was five shots, probably, oh, it's not super tight. I'll just, I don't know how many I got in here. I'll go ahead and just throw the rest of them in there just to see what this does. Ten shots with the uh, 34 grain ABS couplers. All right, next, moving on to the ABS 34 grain, same shape bullet, uh, just the base is a little different. This is the dish base. Uh, last one was the cup base. Let's see what what uh, what it thinks about these. All right, that's five shots with those, and wow, that's uh, substantially better than the last one. I'd say that's uh, MOA for sure right there, five shots. I've got that on film, so we'll go ahead and chance making it worse by making it 10 shots, but uh, I'm not trying to like really take my time and milk it. Uh, 
you know, I'm just trying to get a relative comparison between each of these slugs. I can feel the wind picking up now. It's at my back coming off my left shoulder, but I gotta have an excuse. Still a really nice group, even with the wind shifting a little bit. Wow, really likes these. Jeez, that's pretty. All right, these are the 31 grain Griffin. Uh, they're 217. And these are the cut base. See what she just thinks. I want to say thank you to Ergo, Ergo Air. You guys are awesome and incredible products. If you haven't tried an Ergo grip, put one on your gun. Uh, you'll never go back. Oh. Oh. I was going to bring you some scope cam footage, but my Eagle Vision does not fit on my new scope, so just going to have to settle for some grainy target cam footage. It is spraying these. Oh, now it's tucking them in there. Some stuff, you know, you never know. That's why you buy a lot of different slugs and you test them because uh, it's the only way to find out which one your gun likes. Those, it did not like. All right, try another Griffin slug here. This is the flat base hollow point 217-33 grain. See how she likes these. Like these a lot better than the last ones for sure. Oh yeah. That was me. Hold that one. All right, let's tend with that. Got one more here we're gonna try. All right, gonna try one more. These are the Nick Nielsen 31.2 grain, 217.
All right, and that's 10 with those. Those are pretty good. Uh, we'll uh, walk down there and check it out. All right, looking at a couple of these groups here. I'm back at the house. So this group, center to center, if you take the bad shots, is one point. One point six four. Uh, this one's a little over one point six, probably one point five. This one's right there, one point five. I'm just gonna put this on one point five. All right, one point five, one point five, uh, sub one point five horrible and sub 1.5 so several groups here under one and a half inches I know that's not crazy good a lot of you are like that's not that great but you know what I'm looking for is is like I've said a couple times relative results I can look at this group and say yes deserves further study yes deserves further study absolutely no way i'm just moving on to a different slug you know possibly maybe but it just gives me a good idea of like you know here's a few of the ones i'm gonna probably focus on because what i look for is a cluster like if i look at this group and i say okay yeah that's an inch and a half that's not great but I know for a fact I either pulled this one or it was wind and kind of the same thing with that one. So let's do this. Let's take this group. It's an inch and a half. It's uh, nine or 10 shots. That is actually five shots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I thought I took 10, but I might've just took nine. So either way, that's seven shots right there. Let's take off the one that was me, for sure. Okay, now it's looking a, a, a lot better. Now it's looking incredible, right? Now we're talking, you know, 1.2 inches. And then let's, you know, okay, give myself a little break here. I pulled that one, one was wind. Now you're like, holy crap. That's seven or eight shots in uh, 0.84 inches. So well below MOA. And I'll take the two of my 10 shots I might pull or might be a little off, but what I wanna know is that when everything's working good and I'm doping my wind right and my gun's working good, can I shoot a 0.8 inch group at 100 yards in breezy conditions off a rocky table with a gun that just has a general tune on it? This was the 34 grain VSA slug with the dish base. And then it's funny though, you know, uh, this one was with the cut base and this one was with the flat base. So clearly, just the base is making a pretty substantial difference. This was, uh, and you know, I'm just, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time trying to work that one because, okay, this and that. These are the NSAs in 2.17, but I also have, or 0.217, but I also have them in 0 0.16, 0 0.165, and 0 0.175. So I might try a couple different diameters in that one. They might just like going a little faster. They might like going a little slower. All of these slugs were going between 967 and 980. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is push it up past 1,000 a little bit and see how they do. And then I'll have a maximum speed that I can kind of tune down from there. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode. Uh, really appreciate it. 
This is basically part one of three parts in uh, you know my slug tuning process. This is the first one, just to kind of narrow it down. The next one, I'm gonna take a couple of these guys and go out and do some ballistics verification and medium to long range shooting. And then in the third one, I'm gonna take it out and see how these slugs actually perform on pests and prairie dogs. So again, thanks for watching this week's episode of Colorado Air Gunner. I'm Jim Fisher, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.